support you. And I really, I really uh, <coughs> I feel like something that uh, God has been special to me in my life. He's, he's helped me in my life. He's been there with me through my entire life. I can go back through my life and I can actually pinpoint ex exact areas and exact times that God was there with me and the things that happened to me in my life, what, what uh, uh, the events that took place and what led up to those events. And then after those events were over with and I began to reflect back, I could see exactly what God was doing with my life. And that's kind of what I want to share with you, because I'm not going to keep you long, and I'm not going to bore you. I'm not a preacher, and I'm, I'm not someone to stand up here and say I'm better than everybody else. But believe me, I'm a sinner just like everybody else, and I've, I've had uh, my, some of the worst days that you could imagine. But I've also had a lot of wonderful days, because God has loved me, and he's had a plan in my life from day one. But I want to kind of regress a little bit and go back and give you a little bit of, uh, of my life. And then I want to share a couple of scriptures with you that have meant a lot to me in my life to give me the strength and the courage to, to go on and to continue to do the things that I do and, and to try to strive to do what God wants me to do. Because, believe it or not, God knows every one of you in this room right now. Whether you know Him or not as, as your Savior, God knows you as an individual, not as some a group of, of kids in this room. He knows you as an individual, whether you believe that or not. And he loves you so much, and whether you even know him or not, he loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for yours and my sins, that we could have everlasting life. Now that's, that's something to think about right there, that God loved us, and, and you know, he created us, but he loved us so much that he was willing to send his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. And I can remember back years ago when, uh, you know, I, had, I, was, uh, I was playing football at the time. I, I'd gone through high school and college and uh, had been bounced around, around the league a lot. Uh, I, was, I had been cut six times before I landed here in Washington with the Washington Redskins in 1974. I had even been out of football for a couple of years. Uh, no one would even return a phone call to me and give me the time of day. I thought my career was over with in, in football. But then one day I got a call from George Allen and he invited me up to, to come up and try out for his team here in Washington. And the way things went, I, I was able to, to make the team and go on from being, uh, uh, I was leasing space in Houston at the time, which the, most of you kids don't understand what that is, but I was leasing office space in Houston. There was about 30 million square feet of empty office space in Houston that nobody wanted, and that's my job was to try to lease it, which you can imagine didn't, didn't accomplish much, and it wasn't a whole lot of fun. But I was given an opportunity to come back in the league, and I, I remember the day that it happened, I remember getting that phone call from, from Coach Allen and, and uh, asking me if I was still, could I still kick? I hadn't seen him in a couple, I, I, I had not been in the league for a couple of years. Uh, he wasn't really sure if I'd stayed in shape or if I'd let myself get out of shape and gain a bunch of weight or whatever. But he said, he said, son, can you still kick? And I said, yes, sir, I can still kick. I've been working out every day. And I said, I'm 20 pounds heavier now. It's all muscle. I've been lifting, running, working hard. I'm ready to come back. If you'll give me a chance, I will, I will, I'll make you proud. And I remember him telling me, I said, well, he said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a contract. You sign that contract, get it back to me, and I'll see you. In, uh, in July at Carlisle, Pennsylvania for training camp. And I said, but coach, you don't even want to see me kick. You, you don't want to make sure I'm, I'm not telling you a story. He said, no, I, I believe you. I said, you'll, uh, you'll be fine. And uh, so I, I signed the contract and showed up at training camp in July. And as, I'm, uh, as, I, get in, I, as I was so excited about getting an opportunity to get back in the league, I can remember I'd been praying very hard about this. And I really thought that God was, was showing me something. And as I, I got there early and I'm, I'm getting ready to run out on the football field uh, to practice the first day of training camp in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, I was very early and I remember I was walking out on the field and I heard somebody holler my name and I turned around to look and see who it was and it was Coach Allen. Now George Allen, many of you don't remember, uh, though you're too young to, to remember George Allen. Uh, you, you may be old enough to know George Allen who was our senator, was also our, our, the governor of Virginia for a while. Well, that was George Allen Sr. was his father. 
he was uh, my head coach here in Washington uh, back early on. And he was one of, the, one of the greatest coaches to ever coach in the NFL. And so when I turned around and I saw that it was George Allen calling my name, I was amazed. I, I mean, I knew I had talked to him on the phone, but I really didn't know that he had really put any kind of research into who I was and uh, what I was. And uh, so I turned around and he was yelling, waving to me to come there. So I, I went running over to him and uh, he stuck out his hand, he shook my hand, and he, he pulled me over and he put his arm around me. And he says, now son, he says, you, uh, you know why you're here, don't you? Well, naturally, you know, being a football player and being a kicker, I, I said, yes, sir, I'm here because I, I want to win the kicking job. He said, no, he says, he says, you're here for a reason. He said, you're here because back in uh, 1971, when you were kicking for the Houston Oilers, you kicked four field goals against my Washington Redskins in RFK Stadium, which is the old stadium in, in Washington. He said, you kicked four field goals in a driving rainstorm against my Redskins. And he said, I need a kicker. And he said, I'm going to always have a, a really good defense. I just need somebody who can get me three points in any kind of weather at RFK Stadium. And RFK Stadium was a stadium that nobody wanted to play in because it was such a mess. You know, they're complaining about the field last week when, uh, uh, when the Redskins were playing Seattle. Well, if they had seen RFK Stadium, they would have choked. Because the RFK Stadium, RFK Stadium was, was actually below the river. I don't know if you know this or not, but it, the, the level of the field was below the water level of the Potomac River. And so the water was all, the ground was always staying wet and the water would seep under the, under the stadium and come in and it would come up in the stadium. We'd have, the field was always wet. And so it was always a mess, completely torn up all the time. And he said, I'm gonna always have a good defense, but I need somebody that can get me three points in any kind of weather here at RFK Stadium when we need to win a football game. And he said, I think you're the guy that can do that. And he said, now all you have to do is go out there and beat those other 12 kickers that we brought in for camp this year in the job jury. Now that's a true story. I only had 12 guys I had to beat out for the job. But I got my first motivational speech of my life right there under, under George Allen. George was a good man. Uh, I went on and, and won the job and, and beat out those other guys because there were 12 guys on, on, that they brought in and I beat them out and went on to to play in the NFL for another 14, 15 years, I guess. And did all the things that most people know that I did and, and had all those accomplishments and set all those records and did all those wonderful things that people get to do when they're playing professional football. But for me, the exciting thing was having an opportunity to be able to grow with my family, to be able to grow uh, with the Lord and to be able to Try to make things right and try to do things the best that I could. And I think that's my message today to young people, is that God has something in store for every one of us. And the key, the key to that success is wanting to be the best that you can be. That doesn't mean that you're going to be better than everybody else. It doesn't mean that you're going to be the best basketball player, the best football player on, on the field. It doesn't mean that you're going to be the greatest it's ever been. What it means is God has given each and every one of you, he's given me a talent. He's given me an ability to do something in my life, to do something with my life that means, that has me, and that he's planned for us in our life. And he expects us to be the best that we can be. And again, I want to repeat, it doesn't mean that we're going to be the best at whatever it is we do, but the best that we as an individual can be. Now, only, only us as individuals know what that best is, don't we? Every one of us has that gift. We may not, you may not know what it is right now. You may think it's, you know, you're going to be the greatest baseball player, the, uh, the greatest teacher, the greatest lawyer, and you can if you're willing to work hard for it. But the key is knowing that you have a gift, that God has given you something to do in your life, and you may not know what it is yet but that one day you will, and then it's up to you to develop that and be the best that you can be with that talent and that gift. But I can remember going and making, playing football and doing all those things all those years, and, and everyone looks at my career now and they say, wow, you, you had a great career. And, and they look at how uh, it, it almost seemed easy. As a matter of fact, it was one of the 
I guess one of the uh, things that finally eventually got me out of the league that I had made my job look so easy that they thought anybody could do it, so they finally let me go. And uh, they just now, 25 years later, found a kicker that's made some field goals that's come close to doing uh, a little bit of what I did back 25 years ago. So it wasn't as easy as it looked. But at the same time, I was doing the right thing, and I was doing the things that God wanted me to do. And He wanted me to, to be the best that I could be, and I was striving hard every every day, every week, to be the best that I could be. And uh, But my life wasn't always as easy as it might have looked, because we've gone through some hardships in my family, uh, some, some terrible hardships. When I was playing in 1979, I lost my sister. She was uh, uh, beaten and raped in her home. She was 21 years old. We went through that. Uh, 30 years of going in and out of courts with the guys that did it. <coughs> Finally, uh, after 30-something years, and my uh, my father not even living to see it happen. They put the guy in for, for life without parole. Um, we lost about six months. Uh, uh, well, back in November of, of 2006, I lost my uh, my father to a terrible accident. He was killed on a backhoe. Six months later, my niece, 18 years old, was killed in a terrible car accident by drunk drivers. Uh, she was on her way to Baylor University where she was going to school on a Sunday night, headed back to school, and guys ran into her and uh, killed all of them. And, uh, and she was going to school to be a, a missionary doctor and had, had everything in, in, you know, in front of her. Uh, and so, you know, these are things that happen. And we, we live through life and we go through life every day and we wonder why and we wonder what God has in store for us and then something bad happens and we, we start questioning ourselves. And I always remember something that happened either just before or as it was happening that made me realize that God was in control. I remember when my sister was killed and we were, we were at the funeral home and we were uh, all together and as you can imagine, the family was, in, was distraught um, and tears everywhere and no one knew what to do and my, my mom and dad were completely uh, beside themselves. And as the oldest son, uh, I was. This was during the football season, actually. And I had, I flew in on Thursday uh, for to uh, try to help, kind of get things together a little bit. And we're in this in, in this room together with where my sister was, and we're together. And, and I I finally said as the oldest son, I said, Dad, I said I think we need to pray. And I'll never forget us kneeling and holding hands as a family. And uh, as we prayed. I can remember a calmness that came over the family because before that, no one could even uh, could stop crying. No one could, could even uh, get themselves together. But I remember a calmness that came over us, and I can remember feeling something as if someone had their hand on my shoulder uh, to the point that I actually opened my eyes and, and looked to see if, uh, if my dad or someone had put their hand on my shoulder, but it was, there wasn't anything there. But I could feel this hand, and I, could, I got this message that came through that said, Mark, your sister's fine. She's in heaven with me. And after it was all over, you know, all these years of thinking about that, knowing and, and believing and trusting that that was a true, that was really something that really happened. And the older I get and the closer I get to God and, and to my day of, of being with Him, I realize that that was true. That was something that really happened. That wasn't my imagination. That was God speaking to me. Uh, I can remember at my, my niece's uh, funeral, the last thing that they showed of her was, uh, and, and there were, I guess there must have been two or 3,000 people at her funeral. Uh, a lot of the kids from Baylor, she'd only been there for about three months, she was a freshman. And uh, the college, a lot of kids came down from, from Waco, Texas to her funeral. And I can remember at the end of that funeral, uh, her mother, uh, Francie, had found a, a, a picture that she had taken. It was a, a slide that she had taken of her on a, uh, on a hilltop overlooking a mountain with the sun. Just You could see the reflection of the sun up here and her hands in the air praying to God. You know, and, and we remember that. Those are the things that you're going to remember that are going to tell you that God is real. He's not a made-up story or fiction. He's a real God. And that's why we as Christians have the strength and the faith because we know that we worship a living God. A God who loves us. 
A God who's always going to be there for us no matter what. We can, as individuals, as we get older, and you young people are going to realize this as you get older, you'll realize that, that God is there and He's going to always be there. And yet, you know, they, people are always criticizing athletes that, that pray or raise their hands to God when they do something good on the field and they make fun of it and they, they try to uh, make light of, of, of those guys and those Christian uh, believers. But God is telling them He's, he's really there and all they're doing is, is making events and saying, God, I know you did that. I know you have my life. You have it in control. If I wasn't, if I didn't know that God had my life in His in control and in, in His hands, it would be awfully hard for me to, to go day to day and do the things that I do and, and go through life every day and face all the things that we, that we have to face as, as human beings. But because I know He's there and I have the faith and the strength to know that He's there, it gives me the courage to go on every day and to worship Him and to know that He loves me and to know that he only wants good for us in our lives. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly kind of leave with that, but I want to share a couple of scriptures because I think they're important for you young people. I think these are some scriptures that you can, you can hold on to and you can, you can believe in, and uh, you can trust that God is really speaking to you when you, when you read these. The first one is, and most of you know this, it's in Jeremiah. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know... The plans, and I want you young, this is a, a great one for young people to, to really get to know and, and to have in the back of your minds at all times. Because you're going to run through a lot of good times, you're going to have a lot of bad times. And when those bad times hit, you need to have a word from God that's going to give you the strength to know that He's for real. And it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. These are plans for good and not for disaster." And to give you a future and a hope. Now that's a promise that God has made us. To give us a future and a hope. That's God saying that. He loves us so much that He has our lives planned out for us. And it's for good and not for bad. And then in Romans 8.28... God says... And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. You know, that's another good one that you can remember when things get bad. It's, there's a purpose in everything, whether it's good or bad. It doesn't matter. God has a purpose for it, and it's good, and it's not bad. So if you want to, you can remember those. But the last one I want to, I want to bring to your attention is... is um, let's see what, what I did with it here. It's God's promise to us. It says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There's more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am and you know the way to where I am going. Now that's kind of a good way to end it here. We all know what God's plan is. Uh, we don't know what God's plan is in our lives, but we all have an idea as we get older and we start developing into, into the adults that we're looking for that God has a plan and we start feeling things happen in our lives. We start maturing in, in His Word. And before you know it, you know what it is that God has for you. And you start going in that direction. And so just remember that God does have a plan for your life, no matter how good or bad things may seem to you. There is good in everything, and God will find a way to make it right. Just trust in Him as your personal Savior, and He'll be there for you no matter what. So um, I hope you all are having fun here today, and, and this is kind of the first. Of, I'm sure Jay's got a lot, and I know Christy and, and, and uh, my daughter have got a lot of things that they would like to do. I think they do. <laughs> Lindsay's all back there shaking her head a little bit. But... Uh, Bill, I, I think for young people, the, one, of the, one of the most exciting things that I had when I was growing up was being in the church and having an opportunity to be in our youth programs that we had, and we always had fun. And I've met some of the greatest guys in the world uh, 
at some of the functions and some of the things that we did. I helped to form the Fellowship of Christian Athletes at my university in, at Stephen F. Austin. Uh, I, was, uh, I know I went to um, one of the greatest times of my life was when I had a chance to go to FCA summer camp up in Estes Park, Colorado. And it's the first time that, uh, was, actually I did that after I was in the pros. And I, I went up to, uh, when I first met Roger Staubach. And uh, I, he and I were both, he had just come out of the Naval Academy. I had just graduated from college, was just getting ready to go into uh, my first year with the Philadelphia Eagles as a, as a rookie. And I remember meeting him, and we have been closest of friends ever since. And yet he's gone his separate ways, I've gone mine, but yet we, our paths are brought together by one thing, and that's Jesus Christ. And uh, you'll find a lot of friends like that through Christ. So again, I hope you have a, have a great time here today, and I hope you'll enjoy it, come back and, and be a part of it. And we want to thank the parents for, for coming out and helping out. We want to thank you for, for your concern your young people. Uh, there's not a better place they could be in. So again, Jay, thank, thank you. you. God bless y'all. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.